Dom. Uh, well, Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and welcome back to our next portion of our service. It is time to do our liturgical songs in Ivrit. Please join start us. Off with Matu, yes, please join Matu. us as we start off with Matovu. And join Yahweh. Matovu Halecha Yaakov, Mishkenoteka Yisrael, Vaanivro Hashtecha, Avovetecha, Eshtachave, Elechal, Elechal Hashtecha, Vairatecha. Adonai ahavti meyovetecha unkom, mishkan kvohodecha. Vani ishtachave mehechla, evrecha, evrecha, lipne aronasi. Vani tefilati lecha Adonai, Et razon, Elohim rav chashtecha, Aneini vermetishecha, Aneini vermetishecha. Now let's face east towards Yerushalayim, please, for the Shema. Barhu et al mai hamevorach, Barhu et al hamevorach leolam vayen. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baru Shem Kavod, Malchuto, Le'olam Va'er, Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his glorious name. His kingdom is forever and ever. Amen. Are we going to skip the, what are we going to do next? Let's do the Reader's Cottage. Reader's Cottage, okay. Yit kanav, yit kadash emeh Yit barach, we ishtabach, we eat par, we eat Roman, we eat no say, we eat hadar, we eat hale, we eat hala, shemere kudisha, brechu. Lamin kata, kata, tush bechata, bene kemata, damiran biamal, vimaru, amen. Oh, say shalom, beam Ramav, who ya say shalom, Aleinu, ve al ko Israel, beam ru, beam ru, amen. Ya say shalom, ya say shalom, shalom, Aleinu, ve al ko Israel, ya say shalom. Ya se shalom, shalom aleinu v'yoko Yisrael. Ya se shalom, ya se shalom, shalom aleinu v'yoko Yisrael. Ya se shalom, ya se shalom, shalom aleinu v'yoko Yisrael. Vimaru, Amen. Magnified and sanctified be the name of God throughout the world, which He has created according to His will. May He establish His kingdom during the days of your life, 
and during the life of all the house of Israel, speedily, yes, soon, and say, Amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever. Blessed and praised and glorified and exalted and extolled and honored and magnified and lauded be the Holy Name. the Holy One. Blessed, Blessed be is he who glories transcends. Yes, yes, it is beyond all blessings, blessings and hymns and praises and consolations that men can offer unto him and say, Amen. Amen. May, May he who established, established peace, peace in the heavens grant peace to us and, and to all of Israel, Israel and, and say, Amen. Amen. Let's go directly to the Torah blessing. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Dealing with the allergies. <laughs> So which one was it you wanted to lead off with? Oh, our normal Torah blessing, beginning Okay. With. Okay. Elena? Uh-huh. Okay. <coughs> uh, go back, please. Elena. Back up a, about two pages. <coughs> there it is. That'll, that'll work right there. You had it a minute ago. There. Whoop. Yeah, the, there you you had it a second ago. There it is. Okay. Vayomer Moshe, Kuma Adonai, Vayafutsu Oyavecha, Vayanusu Misanecha, Mipanecha. Ki mitzion tetze he tohora. Ki mitzion tetze he tohora. Uragor Adonai mirushalayim. Baruch shenatan Torah Torah. Baruch shenatan Torah Torah. Vayamo Yisrael v'higdu shato. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Echad Eloheinu Gadol Adoneinu Kahado Shemo Galula Adonai Ti, Inirama Shemo Yaktav, Amen. Lecha Adonai Hagadula, Vehagura, Vehatere, Vehanesak, Vehahor, Kiko Vashemayin Uvaret, Kiko Vashemayin Uvaret, Lecha Adonai Hamalacha, Vahamit nase le kole rosh. Romamu Adonai Eloheinu. Vishachavu lehagon raglav kadosh hu. Romamu Adonai Eloheinu. Vishachavu lehagon kadosh hu. Ki kadosh Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai, Adonai, Erachu Lechanu, Erech Apayim, Barach Hesed Emet, Nose Chesed Lachofim, Nose Yavu, Befasha, Vechata, Venachet, Amen. And now for the... The uh, opening of the Torah? Yeah. Blessing? The, yeah. Okay. Go to Cam 1, please, first. Oh, we, As they we need to go ahead and get the Torah, the Torah. undressed and ready. Okay.
I need to see where we start. Forgot the words for a moment. Let's just look at it. And let's, where's the, it's red. Uh -huh. And if it'll stay open for me, we will find red here. Slide it that way just a little. This is going to be the other direction. Okay, let's see where we are here. It's not going to be that far. That's it, right there. Do we need to go over here? Yeah. Okay. Today's Torah Parsha starts in Deuteronomy chapter 11, beginning in, I believe it's verse 23. Is that what it says in our handout? Or nine. <laughs> I don't know. Yep, 26. Okay. Um, let's see. I guess Gloria's. Did you say you were going to do it today? Bring up the blessing, please. Oh, right, you need to be called. Okay. Yamodad, Simchav, Bat Sarat, or Torah. Amen. Amen. You want to come up and see where the part is so mm -hmm. you can bless the word? Yes. Right there. <coughs> Barkur Adonai Ambura, Baruch Adonai Havurach Le'olam Ba'el, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam, Asher Bakarbanu Mikol Amim, Vetanalu Lanu Et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah, Amen. Amen. Okay, so right here we have the beginning word of our Parsha, which is Re'e. Re'e anoki noten lefenecham hayom baraka uklala et habaraka 
Shir Tishmaun El Mitzavot Yahweh Elohechem Shir Anoki Mitzav Ve Etichem Hayom Vehaklala Eim Lo Tishmaun Tishmau El Mitzavot Mitzvot, mitzvot el uh, uh, Yahweh, Elohechem, and look, re means look or observe, I uh, place before you, for y'all, um, today a blessing and a curse, et a blessing Share uh, Tishmau, if y'all will listen to uh, the the commandments of Yahweh, uh, your y'all's God, and um, which I have uh, commanded uh, y'all today, and a curse if not Tishmau uh, el the mitzvot uh, Yahweh uh, Elohechem v'sortam. And turn aside from his his path, Haderik, um, which Anochi <laughs> Mitzaveh, switching back and forth too much, which uh, I, I have commanded y'all this day uh, to follow after, um, not to follow after uh, Elohim, Acharim, uh, other gods. Um, Ashir lo yad yadatam, which you have not known. Amen. Amen. That's the blessing. That's the Torah this morning, the first paragraph of the Parsha. So we can now um, do the closing blessings. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu Torah imet, vehaye olam nata betukeinu. Baruch ata Adonai, noten ha-Torah. Amen. Good job. Thank you. Come back around and we'll... I'll take this one over, and you take the other one, and hold it up for the congregation. Three panels. That's about right. Next slide, please. Veso hatora asher samoshe lifnei b'nei Yisrael al pi Adonai. Moshe. This is a Torah which was placed by Moshe before the children of Israel from the mouth of Adonai in the hand of Moshe. Amen. Amen. And if you can go ahead and sit down, then I'll uh, hand you the... Well, you can take one scroll and I'll take the other one. And you can start rewinding the Parsha. There you go. Okay, and uh, why don't you get me the strap over there, and we'll just leave it sitting on the table to work with it. Oh, hold on to the other end. Bring it around. Okay, we got it. And then... Uh, bring the uh, top cover. This is the uh, Talit Katan, or mm-hmm. Torah Katan. <laughs> yep. We also call it a begid, I mean clothing for the Torah. Was a person dressing the Torah, right? Yeah, the we are the big day. Mm-hmm. Big day, we are the dressers. <laughs> okay.
Turn around, we'll set it down on that little table, and then we'll finish it up. Set the handle right there. It's Chaim Chi Lamagasikim Ba. Betomeha mehushar derachecha darkeno am bekoti botecha shalom hashir venu adonai ilecha vena shuva chadesh. Chadesh Yameinu, Chadesh Yameinu Kekedem. It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and those who support of it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Bring us back, Lord, to you, and we shall come. On our days as of old. Amen. And you may be seated. <coughs> Well, uh, it, I have pretty much covered the uh, first part of the Torah blessing, you know, for the Torah Parsha this week uh, in the morning class. And so we're going to go ahead and open up uh, uh, the English and make some strides to getting through part of it anyway. Some things that we feel are very important that were covered in the Torah this week. Um, I think, first of all, see, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you listen, listen and obey, the word is Shema, just like we sang in the Torah, a while, uh, the blessings a while ago, Shema Yisrael, well, Shema you, <laughs> you listen, <laughs> Shema uh, to the, to the uh, commandments of God. He says, I'm setting a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you listen to Shema, to the mitzvot of Yahweh your God that I am giving you today, and a curse if you don't listen to the mitzvot, listen to and obey the commandments of Yahweh your God. But you turn away from the way I'm ordering you today to follow other gods that you have not known. So we see then that Moses is being instructed by God to give us the doorway through which we can pass to receive the blessings of Almighty Yahweh. And so uh, it's very important for us to realize that all of the Torah is a doorway. And it doesn't do us any good to just look at it. There are a lot of people sit and look at the Torah all day long and go, oh, the Torah, the Torah, the Torah, but they don't go through the doorway. What are they supposed to go through it? Well, they're supposed to implement what's in it so that they can then be lined up with Yahweh and his blessings that he wants to pour out on mankind. And you and I are supposed to be the holy priesthood who brings these blessings to the world around us. So the blessings are scheduled for all of mankind, but then we are the ones who initiate that action by teaching the rest of the world what the commandments are and demonstrating for them how to obey those commandments. So, when Yahweh your God brings you into the land that you're entering in order to take possession of it, you are to put a blessing, put the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Eval. Both are west of the Jordan in the direction of the sunset. That's the evening time when the sun's going down. Um, <clears throat> in the land of Kana'i, living in Arava, across from Gilgal, near the pistachio trees of Moray, or the almond trees, as some translate it. Uh, for you 
are to cross the Jordan to enter in and take possession of the land Yahweh your God has given you. You are to own it and live in it. Our, our fathers didn't get to live in it. So we are going to live in it for them. We're going to be blessings upon them by receiving the blessings that Yahweh promised them. When Yahweh your God brings you to the land you're entering in in order to take possession of it, you are to put a blessing, the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal. Both are west of the Jordan. For you are to cross the Jordan to enter and take possession of the land. This is what God promised Abraham so long ago. And he says, I want you, his descendants, to go into the land and take possession of it. Now, God has promised them that he will bring them the victory. He will do the fighting for them. But they don't believe it. The first time he invited them in, they said, oh, well, these, these people are too big and too powerful for us. And God says, oh, I see, you want to fight them. Okay, we'll, we'll lead you in the wilderness for a few years until you have gotten stronger and they grow weaker. <laughs> so you can beat them. <laughs> so here are the laws and the rulings that you're to obey in the land of Yahweh, your God, your ancestors, has given to possess as long as you live on the earth. You... Everybody say, I must. I must. I must destroy all the places where the nations you are dispossessing serve their gods. I must destroy. I, everybody say that. I must, I must destroy all the places where nations you are dispossessing served their gods. Whether on high mountains or hills or under some leafy tree. Break down their altars. Smash their standing stones to pieces. Burn up their sacred poles completely. Cut down the carved images of their gods. Exterminate their name from that place. God doesn't want us worshiping any other gods. He says in verse 4, but you're not to treat... Yahweh your God this way. Rather you are to come to the place where Yahweh your God will put his name. He will choose it from all your tribes and you will seek out that place which is where he will live and go there and you will bring there your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes that you have set aside for Yahweh, the offerings that you give, the offerings you have vowed or voluntary offerings and the firstborn of your cattle and sheep. There you will eat in the presence of Yahweh your God. When you're eating, you're supposed to be eating in the presence of Yahweh your God. That's what we are supposed to do. There you will eat in the presence of Yahweh your God. And you will rejoice. And you will what? Rejoice over everything you set out to do and your households in which Yahweh your God has blessed you. You will not do things the way we do them here today where everyone does what is in his own opinion seems right because you haven't yet arrived at the rest and inheritance which Yahweh your God is giving you. But when you cross the Jordan and live in the land, Yahweh your God is having you to inherit. He gives you rest from all your surrounding enemies so that you are still in safety. Then you will bring all that I am ordering you to the place your God chooses to have his name live. Your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, tithes, the offering from your hand, all the best possessions that you dedicate to Yahweh. You will rejoice you will what? Rejoice. You will what? Rejoice. Say, I, I will, will rejoice, rejoice in the presence of Yahweh my God. 
our sons and our daughters, your male and female slaves, the Levi staying with you inasmuch as he has no share or inheritance with you. Be careful not to offer your burnt offerings just anywhere you see, but do it in the place Yahweh will choose with one of your tribal territories. There is where you are to offer your burnt offerings. Do everything I ordered you to do. However, you may slaughter and eat uh, meat wherever you live, whenever you want, in keeping with the degree to which Yahweh your God has blessed you, the unclean and the clean may eat it as if it were a gazelle or a deer, but you don't eat the blood, pour it out on the ground like water. So the blood is not to be eaten. You are not to eat it on your property, on your own property, the tenth of your grain, your new wine, your olive oil that you set aside for Yahweh, or the firstborn of your cattle or sheep, or any offering you have vowed, or voluntary offering, or the offering from your hand. No, you are to eat these in the presence of Yahweh your God in the place your God will choose. And your sons and your daughters, male and female slaves, the Levite that is your guest, um, and you are to rejoice. You are to rejoice. Amen. Say it. Rejoice. I am to rejoice. How are you supposed to rejoice before Yahweh your God in everything you undertake to do as long as you are living on your property? Take care not to abandon the Levi. And when Yahweh your God expands your territory as he has promised you, and you say, I want to eat meat simply because you want to eat meat, then you may eat meat as much as you want if the place where Yahweh your God chooses to place his name is too far away from you then you are to slaughter animals from your cattle or sheep, which Yahweh has given you, and eat on your own property as much as you want. Eat it as you would a gazelle or a deer. The unclean and clean alike may eat it. Just take care not to eat the blood, because the blood is the life. You are not to eat the life with the meat. Don't eat it, but pour it out on the ground like water. Do not eat it so that the things will go well with you and your children after you as you do what Yahweh sees right. Only the things set aside for God which you have, the vows that you have vowed to make, you must take and go to the place which Yahweh your God will choose. Therefore, you will offer burnt offerings, meat offerings on the altar of Yahweh your God. The blood of your sacrifices is to be poured out on the altar of Yahweh your God, and you will eat the meat. Obey. Everybody say obey. obey. And pay attention to everything that I am ordering you so that things will go well with you and with your descendants after you as you do what Yahweh sees is good and right. When Yahweh your God has cut off ahead of you the nations who are entering in in order to dispossess, and when you have dispossessed them and are living in the land, be careful after they have been destroyed ahead of you not to be trapped into following them so that you inquire after their gods and ask how did these nations serve their gods. I want to do the same. You must not do this to Yahweh your God. You're not to worship Asherah. And claim it's for God. Oops. You're not supposed to worship Easter and claim it's for God. No, no, no. You must not do this to Yahweh your God, for they have done their gods all the abominations that Yahweh hates. They even burned up their children their daughters and their sons in the fire of their gods. You know, there are nations all over the world that have done that. Everything I'm commanded you, you are to take care to do and do not add to it or subtract from it. If a prophet or someone who gets a message while dreaming arises among you and he gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder comes about as he predicted when he said, let's follow other gods which you have not known and let us serve them, you are not to listen to what that prophet or dreamer says. Oh, I've seen this so much in the church today. Uh, many people call themselves a prophet of God and they stand up there and all they do is bless the sinners and tell them how wonderful they are and that God loves them 
and accepts them just as they are. No, he does not. He wants us all to turn back to him and follow him, not these pagan deities. If the sign or a wonder comes about as he predicted when he says, let us follow other gods which you have not known and let us serve them, you are not to listen to what that prophet or dreamer says. For Yahweh your God is testing you in order to find out whether you really will do love Yahweh your God with all your heart and with all of your being. My question for you is, do you love Yahweh your God with all of your heart and all of your being? Then don't do these things he told you not to do. Don't worship the goddess Ishtar, the pagan rare-breasted fertility goddess of the Middle East. If you come and have sex with her, with her priestesses, then all is going to go well with you and you will be blessed and your fields will produce and your animals will reproduce and you will reproduce and all of these blessings will come upon you that Yahweh your God promised you, but you're going to get them from Easter because she's a more powerful goddess. You believe that? No. Good. Act like it. Don't celebrate Easter with the pagans. Don't chase after little bunny rabbits. Don't go hunting Easter eggs out in the field. Stay away from them. They're abhorred before God because of their coming against his instructions. And that prophet or dreamer is to be put to death because he urged rebellion against Yahweh your God. And that's what the church is doing today. They need to be put to death, I think. Uh, I don't think we're supposed to be the ones that do it, but if God uses us to bring judgment down, then it's God's choice. But we will obey our God, amen? amen. Now, I'm not going to go out and start killing people that practice, you know, pagan worship, but I am going to tell them it's a sin, yeah. and I am going to tell them to turn away from their sins so they don't incur the wrath of Almighty God upon them for their actions if your brother or your mother or your son or your daughter or your wife whom you love or your friend who means as much to you as yourself secretly tries to entice you to go and serve other gods which have you haven't known neither you nor your ancestors gods of the people surrounding you whether near or far away from you anywhere in the world you are not to consent You are not to listen to him. You must not pity him or spare him, and you may not conceal him. Rather, you must kill him. Oh, my Lord. Your own hand must be the first one on him, putting him to death. And afterwards, the hands of all the people. Well, that's not something we are able to do here, but when we get to the land that God has given us to possess for an inheritance, he expects that action. And we would have to be obedient to that. Verse 11, you are to stone him to death because he has tried to draw you away from Yahweh your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the life of slavery. Then all of Israel will hear. I'm trying to see what time it is, 1.35. 1 uh, will be will hear about it and be afraid that they will stop doing such wickedness as this among themselves. If you hear it told that one of your cities, which Yahweh your God has given you to live in, certain scoundrels have sprung up among you and have drawn away the inhabitants of their city by saying, let us go and serve other gods which you haven't known, then you are to investigate the matter and inquiring and searching diligently if the rumor is true and it if, if it is confirmed that such detestable things are being done among you, you must put the inhabitants of that city to death with the sword, destroying it completely with the sword, everything in it, including the livestock. Now, I'll tell you, a lot of people get confused because they read this and then they see the Muslims doing it. And they will put Christians and anybody else that they see that they perceive to be contrary to their faith to death with their swords and hack their heads off 
and claim that it's for Yahweh, and it isn't. Because we are obedient to the commandments of God, and anybody who hacks our head off is not in agreement with Yahweh. Are you following that? So we must defend ourselves. None of what has been set apart for destruction is to stay in your hands. Then Yahweh will turn to fierce anger and show you mercy and have compassion on you and increase your numbers as he swore to your ancestors, provided you listen to what Yahweh says and obey all his mitzvot that I am giving you today, thus doing what Yahweh your God sees is right. I will not defile, defy the government that I live in as long as they don't try to force me to worship other gods besides Yahweh. But if they came to me and tried to tell me I'm not to worship Yahweh, all bits are off. Nobody's going to tell me to worship another god besides Yahweh. Nobody. You are the people of Yahweh your God. You are not to gash yourselves or shave your hair above your foreheads in mourning for the dead because you are the people set apart as holy for Yahweh your God. Yahweh your God has chosen you to be his own unique treasure out of all the people of the earth on the face of the earth. You are not to eat anything disgusting. The animals which you may eat are the ox, sheep, goat, Deer, gazelle, roebuck, uh, ibex, antelope, oryx, and mountain sheep. Any animal that has a separate, a separated hoof, completely divided, and also choose the could, these animals you may eat. But you are not to eat those that only chew the could or only have a divided head. For example, the camel... The hare, the coney, are unclean because they chew the cud, but they don't have a split hoof. It doesn't chew the cud. If it doesn't chew the cud, you are not to eat meat from these or touch their carcasses once they're dead. Of all the lives in the water, you may eat these. Anything in the water that has fins and scales, these you may eat. But whatever... Um, Whatever lacks fins or scales, and scales, you are not to eat. It is unclean for you. You may eat any clean bird, but these you are not to eat. Eagles, vultures, ospreys, kites, any kind of a buzzard, any kind of a raven, ostriches, screech owls, seagulls, any kind of a hawk, uh, little owls, great owls, horned owls, pelicans, barn owls, comrades, storks, any kind of heron, hoopoe, and bat. All winged swarming creatures are unclean for you. They are not to be eaten, but all clean flying creatures you may eat. All clean f flying creatures you may eat. You are not to eat any animal that dies naturally, although you may let a stranger staying with you eat it or sell it to a foreigner because you are a holy people for Yahweh your God. You are not to boil a young animal in its mother's milk. Why? It's cruel. If you take a, a young animal and you don't kill it, but you just throw it into the milk cauldron and, and boil it alive, does it feel pain? Yeah. They'll even scream out in their death how hard it is, how painful it is. That's not something God would command us to do. And so are we supposed to eat blood that's inside the animal that's being cooked? No, we're supposed to pour it out on the ground. And you're not doing that to that baby calf that was born or that baby lamb or whatever, goat. You're not supposed to boil it in its own mother's milk because that's, that's cruel to the mother. She sees her baby being put into a cauldron of her boiling milk and it's crying and screaming out, Help me, Mama! And the mother is powerless. To do anything. That is not God. That is not the way we are to do our God. You're not to boil a young animal in its mother's milk. 
every year, and that's something the uh, pagans apparently did, every year you must take one-tenth of everything your seed produces in the field and eat it in the presence of Yahweh, your God, in the place where he chooses. Now, this would be like for the Feast of Tabernacles or other holy days that he commanded us to observe. One-tenth of everything we produce should go into celebrating those festivals to worship God with a full and joyful heart. If you have 10% of your income to worship God with, you can do some good rejoicing with 10% of your annual salary to go before God to worship on his holy days, right? Well, I can. I can think of a lot of things I would like to do that I could do if I had the tithe set aside for it. And, of course, we try to do that on our holy days. Uh, but if the distance is too far, too great for you, so that you are unable to transport it because of the place where Yahweh chooses to put his name is too far away from you, then Yahweh, your God, prospers you. You are to convert it to money. And take the money with you, go to the place Yahweh your God will choose, and exchange the money for anything you want. Cattle, sheep, wine, other intoxicating liquor, or anything you please. And you are to eat there in the presence of Yahweh your God. Oh, wait a minute. We don't believe you're supposed to, to drink wine or intoxicating liquor. Well, there it is in God's word. You want to do what God says or what man says? Man, the other night, it was Shabbat. We had been working so hard that we didn't have a chance to even prepare anything for dinner. Shabbat was coming on us, and we went out to a restaurant, and we ordered food. And I ordered a margarita. <laughs> and when we got a big double one. And me and my wife shared it and rejoiced before the Lord. And I tell you, my heart went from heavy and feeling totally crushed to rejoicing. <laughs> you can rejoice when you've got some good drink in front of you that's especially with alcohol in it. You can rejoice. You can do that with wine. If you've got good wine, well, you can rejoice when you're drinking that before Yahweh. You know? So you are to eat there in the presence of Yahweh your God and enjoy yourselves. And what? Enjoy. enjoy yourselves. Oh, but we're not supposed to enjoy ourselves because worshiping God is hard. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Worshiping God is not a burden. Never a burden. Exchange the money for what you want including intoxicating liquor. And you are to eat in the presence of the Lord, but don't neglect the Levite, or in other words, God's servant crew. You are to support the God's servant crew with uh, what he needs to enjoy the festivals too. And if we neglect him, then we're breaking this command God has given us. At the end of every three years, you are to take all of the tithes of your produce from the year and store it in your towns. Then the Levite, because he has no share or inheritance like yours, along with the foreigners, the orphans, the widows living in your towns, will come and eat and be satisfied so that Yahweh your God will bless you in everything your hands produce. Now, we don't do the third tithe uh, law at this time because the, co the government here is taxing us so much to try to uh, accommodate people who are poor uh, and they give them food and, and whatever. Uh, so we feel like that the f government is taking it out of our hands. So we let them do that and count that as our third tithe. And we pray a prayer saying, Lord, please accept the taxes that we pay to our government because it's being used to support those who are poor. Uh, we ask you to count that towards the third tithe uh, year that we are supposed to be paying. And we ask you to count that for our, for our credit. And he does. <coughs> and then at the end of seven years, it tells us you're to do a Shemitah. What's a Shemitah? Uh, it's a release of debt. 
If somebody owes you a lot of money, every seventh year you are to give them Shemitah. Every creditor is to give up what he has loaned to his fellow member in the community as not to force his neighbor or a relative to repay it because Adonai's time of remission has been proclaimed. You may demand that a foreigner repay his debt, but you are to release your claim on whatever your brother owes you. So those in the community of faith are not supposed to have to, to do that in the Shemitah year. In spite of this, there will be no one needy among you because Yahweh will certainly bless you in the land which Yahweh your God has given you as an inheritance to possess. And I would like to add that this is specifically in relation to entering the promised land so that you will have the blessings of God. Uh, verse 5, if you only listen carefully to what Yahweh your God says and take care to obey all of these commandments that I'm giving you today. Yes, Yahweh your God will bless you as he promised you and will lend money to many nations without having to borrow. And you will rule over many nations without ruling over you. Without any of them, they're ruling over you. Yes, sir? Super quick question. So in relation next week as we reach out to brethren that we may or may not have offended, may or may not have something um, you mean next to resolve. Month, the coming yeah, month. next month. Yeah, the next coming month. What, in this regards to obeying this commandment, about reaching out to a person whom God, for whatever reason, the kingdom of heaven has not revealed to you, is whether or not is that y owes you money. Okay. And has not made any effort whatsoever Has he, is he a brother that's what i need to find i don't know the answer well if he's uh, a fellow believer in yeshua then you probably should apply this to that person because they have been grafted in according to the but w how do i go about finding out in regards to uh well, ask them okay so i can contact them and ask them Baldy and up front. It said clearly if they're a foreigner, then you don't have to demand, don't have to release them. Okay? okay. If they're a foreigner, then you can demand that they go ahead and pay what they owe. And if they are not a believer in Yeshua, then they don't qualify as a brother. What would be the questions you would ask? You believe in Yeshua? Um, who's that? Then you're not my brother. Well, I'm, I'm, be, I'm responding how he might respond. Well, I'm telling you how I would respond. Yes, that's what I'm asking. So that's how you would base it. But they don't know you're fixing to release them. Don't tell them that. I'm not. Now, what if they say... Geez. If they say they are a believer in Yeshua, then you can say, uh, do you really mean that or are you just playing games, just hoping for favors? You see what I'm saying? That is beautifully. Just, thank you. Just ask them key questions. Yes. Okay. And Those. if they say just hoping for favors, then they're not a brother. Thank you. So you can judge it based upon the way they answer intelligent questions. And that puts scripture I've read in Old and New Testament, well, Torah and New Testament in context. Thank you. Okay. Good. If someone among you is needy, one of your brothers in any of your towns in which you land, in your land, which Yahweh your God has given you, you are not to harden your heart or shut your hand from giving to your needy brother, if they are a true brother. No, you must open your hand to him and lend him enough to meet his need and enable him to obtain what he wants. Guard yourself against allowing your heart to enter a mean-spirited thought that because of the seventh year, the year of Shemitah is at hand, you would be stingy towards your needy brother and not give him anything. For when he may, then he may cry out to Yahweh against you and will, uh, be, uh, it will be your sin instead of his. Okay? And then, um, rather, you must give to him And you are not to be grudging when, he, when you give to him. If you do this, Yahweh your God will bless you in all of your work and everything you undertake. For there will always be poor in the, in the land. That is why I'm giving you this order. 
you must not open your hand. You must open your hand to your poor and needy brother in your land. Just make sure they're a brother and then open your heart and your hand to them. If your kinsman, a Hebrew or a man or a woman, is sold to you, he is to serve you for six years. But in the seventh year, you are to set him free. Moreover, when you set him free, don't let him leave empty-handed, but supply him generously from your flock, threshing floor, wine press, from what Yahweh your God has blessed you with, you are to give him. Remember, you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and Yahweh your God redeemed you. That is why I'm giving you this order today. But if he says to you, I don't want to leave you because he loves you and your household, and because his life is with you as is a good one, then take an awl and pierce his ear through right into the door, and he will be your slave forever. Do the same with your female slave. Don't resent it when you set him free, since during his six years of service he has been worth twice as much as a hired employee. Then Yahweh your God will bless you in everything you do. All the male firstborns in your land, the herd of cattle and your flocks, are, you are to set aside for Yahweh, your God. You are not to do any work with a firstborn from your herd or a shear, a firstborn sheep. Each year you and your household are to eat it in the presence of Yahweh your God in the place which Yahweh will choose. But if it has a defect, it is lame or blind or has some other kind of fault, you are not to sacrifice it to Yahweh your God. Rather, you eat it on your own property. The unclean and the clean alike may eat it like the gazelle or deer. Just don't eat its blood. Pour it out on the ground like water. And then he goes into the month of Abib, which is the first, uh, first uh, month of the calendar year. And that's where we are to observe uh, Passover. Uh, how far does this Parsha go? Oh, it's on the screen. 16. 16 through 17. S to 17. Observe the first month of Aviv. Keep Pesach to Yahweh your God. For in the month of Aviv, Adonai your God brought you out of Egypt at night. You are to sacrifice the Pesach offering from the flock and heard to Yahweh your God in the place where Yahweh will choose to have his name live. You are not to eat any chametz. What is chametz? Leavened. It's leavened bread. It's something that is puffy. Bread that's been puffed up. Uh, like sourdough is, is chametz. Okay? And um, baking soda is not chametz. It's not soured. It doesn't make the dough sour. It's a chemical reaction to the heat. And with the moisture in the bread and the heat, then it makes it swell up. Uh, I took uh, some pancake mix. We didn't have any bisquick or any uh, biscuits. And I didn't have the materials I needed to make uh, biscuits. And we wanted to have biscuits and gravy for breakfast, right? I like biscuits and just cream roux. And so anyway... I took the pancake mix. I put two cups of pancake mix in a bowl, and I put enough water in there so that it became uh, like what I've seen pancake dough look like um, before you start blending it, you know, and working it. And so anyway, then I went ahead and rolled it out after it was well blended with uh, kneading. And... Uh, I blend. I, w I rolled it out to about a quarter inch thickness, and then I got me a, uh, a drinking glass that was about the right size on the on the head of it for making biscuits. And I went and and made all these biscuits, and I cooked them. Hey, Fina, how good was that? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and the the package didn't tell me how to do that. I just knew that. Most of the ingredients used in biscuits is right there in the pancake mix. You just water it down a little bit more so it'll pour, and you pour it on your griddle, you know, and you can have pancakes. But those biscuits, they didn't have any leavening in them. They puffed up real nicely because of the heat and the moisture in the dough. It all worked together, a chemical reaction. It puffed up, and we had really nice, pleasant biscuits. I was afraid they were going to end up like hard tack, you know, and just kind of be hard to bite, <laughs> need a chisel and a hammer to cut them up. But no, it was real tender and real, real good. And uh, it was real, it made really nice biscuits for 
for eating breakfast. Anyway, let me skip on down here and see what. Here it gives some descriptions of the uh, holy days that we're supposed to observe. And uh, it says three times a year. Let's read this in verse 16, 16 and 17. Three times a year, all your men are to appear in the presence of Yahweh your God in the place which he shall choose at the festival of Matzah, that's the unleavened bread, Passover, uh, in the place he will choose. The festival of Matzah, the festival of Shavuot. Shavuot means weeks, and that's the uh, Pentecost. That's also known as Pentecost. And the festival of Sukkot, which is tabernacles. That's the Feast of Tabernacles. They shall not show up before Yahweh empty-handed. They are to plan to bring a nice, generous offering to Yahweh during those times. But every man is to give what he can in accordance with the blessings that Yahweh your God has given you. So that's, that's what we are to do. Um, anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this teaching and uh, that we can all be found acceptable and worthy in God's sight of those blessings that he has promised us. Amen? Well, we'll have our closing ceremony now, so if we can bring the, uh, uh, the chametz, <laughs> the chametz, we're eating chametz today, <laughs> leavened bread, and uh, it's, it's uh, challah, it's called challah, and it's um, where the rabbi's portion has been pulled, the Levite's portion. It's pulled off of the dough before it's braided into bread, and it's put in the oven, and it's baked until it burns up. And that's the, uh, it's called the challah portion. Uh So we will be having uh, our usual challah bread and our wine this morning in in our closing ceremony. Does that explanation help a little bit? Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Let's have our... Uh, I guess the uh, ironic benediction, please. Yevarek Karonai Vishmarecha. Amen. Yaya Adonai Panavilecha Vechunecha. Amen. Yisa Adonai Panavilecha Vayasem Lecha. Shalom. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord turn his face upon you and be gracious to you. Uh, The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Give you shalom. Amen. Amen. Now for the blessing for the fruit of the vine. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Borei Pri Agapen Amen Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has created the fruit of the vine. Amen. Amen. Hand wash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I was so excited about the holler. Anyway. <laughs> Amen. This are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, uh, who has sanctified us by your commandments and commanded us concerning the washing of our hands. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, hamotzi lechem min ha'aretz. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Amen. Amen. Oh, well, thank you, Rabbi. <laughs> well, this has been a pleasure to be here and to teach you God's Word. Mm -hmm. And I hope and pray that all of you will begin to listen to and try to pray through and ask God to show you the best way for you to keep His instructions in the Torah. Yes. So that we will all be found approved in His sight as servants of having His approval. And we thank him for allowing us to serve him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's do our uh, what closing credits. Shalom, Havarim, Shalom, Havarim, Shalom, Shalom. La Yitra, La Yitra, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom, my friend, Shalom, my friend, Shalom, Shalom. Till we meet again, till we meet again, shalom, shalom, shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom, shabbat 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 shalom. Hey, shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom, shabbat 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 shalom, shabbat 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 shalom, shabbat 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 shalom, shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, shabbat 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 shalom. Hallelujah. Amen. Good job. Thank you. Well, you too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see you again. Hallelujah. Same time, same station. <laughs> now.